got checked out of our hotel. Now we're gonna catch the train a couple stops down to go get our rental car. Couldn't figure out the train. There's a mixture of trains, trams, and buses here. So now we're just gonna walk. And we're already like 15 minutes late. Oh, good to know. We just got our car and Kara tried to get into the passenger side, which was the driver's side. <laughs> we just picked up our rental car and we're ready to hit the Great Ocean Road. Highlights for the day include... Kangaroos, koalas, and really pretty scenery. That's now, a B-roll. If I can figure out this whole driving on the left side of the road thing and not wreck the car before we get to the Great Ocean Road. We haven't driven in a long time. I drove on the left side of the road in South Africa for a couple days. It went, I, di <laughs> I didn't hit anything, but everybody in the car was scared for their life that was on the passenger side. It's not hard driving on the left side of the road. The hard thing is the depth perception when the steering wheel is on the opposite side of the car. So I put the left side of the car way too close to everything. So hopefully I'm not gonna run Kara into anything. We are about to leave Melbourne and our first stop will be Torquay, which is technically the start of the Great Ocean Road. It is your job to navigate us out of the city. Oh gosh. The responsibility has been placed in your hands. I don't want this responsibility. Well, one of us has to drive, so. I can't even navigate when we're walking. Okay. We'll turn the camera on once we get out of the city. It took about two and a half minutes to get out of the city and so far we haven't hit anybody. Good job, Nate. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I need to think about this logically. In America, when you drive on the right hand side of the road, if you want to drive in the slow lane, you drive on the right. Oh, that's the lynch wipers. They do that about a hundred times. So here, if I want to drive in the slow lane, should I drive on the left? Is it backwards? I uh, don't know. I assume. First time we're seeing the ocean. We're almost to the great ocean road. I believe we're here. Fisherman's oh, Beach. First things first, we're gonna go find some food. Let's go touch the ocean first. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be windy and we're not gonna be able to talk unless we're in a car or inside for like the next three days. <laughs> I think it's just constantly windy on the Great Ocean Road. Talk to you later. Maybe I can figure out how to make a makeshift wind muff. Is it windy? I think it's probably windy. Time to find brunch. Fish and chips isn't exactly brunch, but we could have for some. We're gonna take it to the beach and watch the surfers. Not a bad place for a picnic. <laughs> the big reveal did not reveal anything. Yum. Whoa. These are massive pieces of fish. There's so many fries. All right, try it. Oh my gosh. We should learn our lesson and get one. No. I am eating all of this. Okay. This is huge. All right. It's better than the one yesterday. All right. It's like so crispy on the outside. The french fries seriously taste like it was cooked with the fish. Like it has a fishy deliciousness. Mm, so good. This is gonna be awesome. Alright, I mean, I can't wait anymore.
That must have been the beginner surf beach. We just finished our lunch here in Torquay and now we're driving about 15 minutes down the road to the world famous Bells Beach. It's supposed to be a lot of really good surfers. Beach because they have like the best surf tournament there in the world. Is that what you said? We don't know. It's a big surf tournament. <laughs> we missed it by just a couple weeks. They were taking everything down. It's great weather. I love this weather. Clouds are nice. Waves are nice. Could have stayed and watched the waves all day. Unfortunately, we have to keep moving because we only have about four hours of daylight left. Let's go. Next up, we're driving 20 minutes to a golf course. You'll see why. If you haven't figured it out yet, this golf course is supposed to be filled with kangaroos. We don't know, it might be our only chance to see kangaroos in Australia. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Thank you, you're after the kangaroo tour? Yes, well here we can see kangaroos here. That's right, you are. Perfect. You can, guaranteed. <laughs> Your tails are so thick. we got to be with those kangaroos. That was totally worth it. They were so cute. And now we're going to Lawn. Hopefully we'll see some more in the wild, but if we don't, at least we got to see them on the golf course. Which, he told us that they were wild. I don't know which came first, the golf course or the kangaroos, but they just live there. Next up, we're driving about 40 minutes to the town of Lawn. Whoa. Attempting to find a lighthouse that we saw in the distance. Hmm. Right or left? Let's go right. Taking the road less traveled sometimes takes you to a dead end. And you just gotta try again. Look how blue the sky is right now. No worries, mate. I was about to say that! <laughs> we made it back to the main road. Cheers. We're back. I cannot get over how blue the sky is and how beautiful this road is. Why don't we live in Australia? I love this place. All that and the lighthouse is straight ahead somewhere. We spotted it? it. Let's touch it. Must touch it. This lighthouse was not even part of the plan. Oh my gosh. It was so pretty. And there was the lookout with that rock. I need to take my camera and just like hold it at any angle and just keep pressing the shutter and every picture would be gorgeous. That's how that's how I describe the Great Ocean Road. Great. Insane. What in the world? It's so like it's all Look at that house. Do you see it? Yes. Look at this 
road. This is real life, people. This right here. These waves are really that big. We were about to skip it and drive straight through Lauren because we wanted to get to the koala bears before it got dark and then we saw a tree with a hundred cockatoos in it. All right, it might not quite be a hundred, but it's a lot. Instead of seagulls, they have these giant white parrots, which is just so Australian. <laughs> Are you jealous of the Australians? Yes, and this is awesome. Just made a quick pit stop in Lorne to see the cockatoos, and now we're driving down the coast to Kennett River to try to spot some wild koala bears. According to Nate's research, this is supposed to be the prettiest part of the whole drive. Check out this curve. So far, I agree. Ocean Road onto Gray River Road, and they're supposed to be koala bears. Why are we whispering? Because the koala bears. <laughs> there's a car pulled over on the side of the road. We think this might mean there's a koala bear in sight. You hear something squeaking. Oh, he's pointing to something. Where? I see him. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I spotted the koala bear. Thanks to the help of the people in the white jeep. <laughs> Sleepy little koala bear. There he is. Hey, little koala bear. All right, this couple in the white jeep saw another one. We're just gonna follow them. It's like right there, but you can barely see it. That's number five. Sorry, we don't have a zoom lens. He can't really see it at all. That needs to be our next investment. Take our word for it, they're really cute. There <laughs> Eight. We spotted a total of 14 koala bears. And now we're heading to Apollo Bay, which is where we'll be staying tonight. We're not doing that, Google, we're gonna do this. Oh, it caught it! Way to go! Whoa. It's like a pet bird dog thing. That's kind of ironic. Australians just have it right. Truth. Yeah, koala bear. <laughs> What's a koala bear say, Nate? I don't know, it's in that kind of roar. I don't know, it sounds like a bear, but it does seem to make some more sound. Breathe in that great ocean air. <laughs> 